Hello and welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games, where today we're flying through the air and are never gonna stop. Hear those balloons go pop, pop, pop. Airburst Extreme is a newer title in comparison to the usual subjects of interest on YY's MG. This one dates from 2004, but while it is OS X only, working well enough on a 400MHz G3 running 10.1, to Intel Macs running 10.6 Snow Leopard, it's not new enough to run on any machine of today. Airburst started life in 2001. The original was classic macOS compatible and has all the core gameplay mechanics of the standard levels mode of Extreme. That said, the follow-up took the formula to a whole new level, with heaps of new game modes, lots more backgrounds and music, balloon customization, more power-ups, and a pretty fleshed out, albeit somewhat cheesy, story mode. Airburst Extreme is worthy of the extreme part of its title. This superb game is an absolute riot to play with friends, and contains an unprecedented replayability, even if you're on your own. I myself played this a significant amount over the years on my old Core 2 Duo iMac. You need only take a single glance of this game to understand how to play it. It's essentially four games of reverse breakout taking place simultaneously, although the game was initially developed with Warlords in mind, where four castles bash a fireball about. The spiky ball bounces around the playing field, popping the balloons that it comes into contact with. Each player has a paddle to biff the ball away from them and towards their rivals. A player falls out of the match, literally, if their central balloon that their character is sitting on is burst. To help and hinder a player's ability to defend their balloons and pop others, a wide variety of power-ups will spawn in randomly. These are collected by either floating over them or hitting them with the ball, which changes colour depending on whose paddle last touched it. These might have straightforward effects, like making your paddle bigger or smaller. They might split the ball into heaps more, causing completely unmanageable chaos, or they might turn your balloons into shredder spikes, allowing you to weaponize yourself by pelting across the screen with the help of the thrust button. This button is also used for a player to unleash their extreme power. These range from rendering opponents' bats unusable, discharging a massive laser, or restoring lost balloons. Most game modes follow a last man standing approach, but there are quite a few with other victory conditions. Some of my favourites include the football mode, which sees a player controlling three characters at once, with the central one being the goalie. Said goalie doesn't have any protective balloons, but does possess a sticky bat for improved aiming. The first to 10 points wins. Balloon racing is an interesting idea where if you're burst, you respawn. The winner is the first player to pop a set number of balloons, switching the emphasis away from defensive play as everyone tries to make the ball their colour so they can score. Invaders mode is a game of space invaders. The player faces off against a horde of robots. And racing is an interesting change of pace, with no balloon popping at all and the four players scrambling around a racetrack instead. Asteroids puts all the players at the bottom, trying to survive an asteroid storm. And Sumo pits the players in a ring of mines, with an always-on thrust. It's an instant loss if you touch one. That's just a taster of what's available. There are plenty more. Each of them are unlocked by playing through the game's story mode, which, while not particularly hard unless you've cranked up the difficulty in the options, serves as an effective introduction to each game mode. The actual story revolves around a set of peculiar goings-on that each of the four primary characters that's BCM, Flux, Maya and Moon, we'll take it in turns dealing with, jetting from planet to planet, playing different airburst modes, and dishing out some silly dialogue along the way. BCM halts invaders from taking over the solar system, Flux investigates ghosts, Moon sorts out irregularities in the space-time continuum, and Maya deals with a mechanical menace. Most of this is the fault of the Mars Media Mega Corporation, who inadvertently caused the creation of Airburst by buying up all the rights to sport on Earth. With nothing stopping sport from happening above Earth, the Airburst League was born. The MMMC is eventually sorted out after a fiddly boss fight, which takes some skill and perseverance. Airburst was developed by Strange Flavor, who are based in the UK. They're still around today, mostly focusing on iOS. With help from Freeverse on the publishing side of things, a release across the wider world was achieved. Although as stated in the manual, much to my amusement, localization into international English did not take place. So everything is spelt correctly. Despite Airburst Extreme being the last Airburst release in 2004, 
The concept wasn't left alone. There was progress on a port to the Xbox 360 Live Arcade, which looked to be quite a step forward graphically. While in the first two games, character models were rendered in Cinema 4D and exported as individual sprites, Airburst 360 would appear to have a full 3D engine. The port was apparently cancelled very close to completion, although Strange Flavor did state in a blog post that it remained on their someday pile, so it hasn't been forgotten about. The 360 itself has been and gone, but I bet it would work quite nicely on the Switch if it was revived. You only need four buttons, so playing on the go with two players using the detachable Joy-Cons would work brilliantly. Oh, I guess it would be nice on the Mac as well, seeing as that's where its origins lie. Modern Macs are a bit rubbish though. All in all then, Airburst is definitely worth trying, if you can find a copy, and a compatible system. The game isn't going to age one bit. It's colourful, sounds great, is super fun, and has so many different ways to play. Is it missing anything? Well, I guess taking Bomberman as an example, most of these games allowed you to customise matches in whichever way you wanted, particularly with the power-ups. While there is a choosy game mode, where each player picks one, a fully user-defined set of rules and bonus options would have been pretty cool. Being able to turn the extreme power-ups off every now and then would be neat too. As great as they are, if you're feeling super competitive, it can feel a bit unbalanced. Flux's Repair Extreme is a lot more useful than some of the others, and if an opponent is playing as Flux, I usually make it my task to get them first. Anyway, that's it for this edition of Yesteryear's Mac Games. Plonk your thoughts in the comments or on the Twitter. You can find me at YYsMG. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, as this won't be the only time I cover an early OSX game. And do check out some of my other videos on classic Macintosh games that define the platform. Thanks for watching then, and see you next time.